Hi, we're going to continue on with our lesson. So we're talking about parabolas and we're going to sketch a parabola, that is, make a quick picture for the following quadratic functions. The following functions are in vertex form, which is y is equal to a, open brackets, x minus h, close brackets, squared, plus k. Well, you see hot in highlighted in yellow. We are going to identify the values of a and the coordinates of the vertex, and the vertex will have coordinates h, k. I just want to draw your attention to this middle factor, x minus h squared. Notice how it's written. It's x minus h. This will give us a surprise, as the h value will often appear to have the opposite value. If you don't know what I mean, perhaps it's best to get started. Two facts that I want you to, to highlight to you right away. If A is positive, the parabola opens upward. If A is negative, the parabola opens downward. Let us get started. So here's my first example. Y is equal to A, open brackets, X minus 1, close brackets, squared, minus 5. What I have here is A is equal to 2, H, and K. I'm going to pick the low-hanging fruit that requires very little thought. k is going to be equal to negative 5. That will be my y-coordinate of my vertex. I'm after my h value. Well, the h value is what I see here. Now, the h value is kind of an interesting one. Many people think that it's going to be 1 or negative 1, but it's actually 1. Is it the opposite as it appears? Now, it is because the middle term is written as x minus h. Suppose if h is 1, it'll appear as x minus 1. Now, perhaps you're wondering, what if h was negative 1? Well, allow me to do it. So it's written as x minus h. If, a, if h was negative 1, you would have to be subtract negative 1. And we know that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So when h is negative 1, it appears as a positive in the factor. When h was equal to positive 1, the factor appeared as x minus 1. But let me get back to this. Very simply, I'm going to sketch the graph. I'm just going to make a quick xy plane. There we have it. It's my xy plane. I'm going to identify my vertex. Now keep in mind my vertex is at coordinates um, h, k. So the coordinates of my vertex are going to be 1, negative 5. What we're probably able to identify is that this point is in quadrant number 4. 1, negative 5 is over there x value is positive, the y value is negative 5. Previously, if a is positive, we said that this parabola opens upwards. And in fact, this is a sketch of our parabola. Notice the lack of detail. However, it enables us to talk about questions like how many x-intercepts we have? 2. What is the range? Well, given the equation, range is quite hard. However, if you're given a picture of the function, much easier and more attainable. Let's continue on. In the second example, y is equal to negative, open brackets, x plus 4 squared plus 2. So right away, what we see is a negative sign in front of the squared term. So this means that a is equal to negative 1. And now we're after h and k. k is equal to 2. h, in our example here, h is obtained by this term. But h is going to be equal to negative 4, using the same reasons that I discussed earlier. So what I get is my vertex is going to be negative 4, 2. So what's going on? I have a negative a value. So this means that my parabola is now opening downward. Sorry, that should be one word. 
just going to make a quick XY plane. And my parabola opens downward. Well, I should probably put my vertex. Negative 4, 2 will, will be a point right here. So that's negative 4, 2, approximately. And my parabola opens downward. So now I can ask myself, wow, how many x-intercepts does this function have? I know two. What is the range? I have a picture to base my reasoning on. All right, I promise we're heading close to home. So far, we've just seen functions with two zeros, or two x-intercepts as they're sometimes called. Try to pick out the values of a h and k here, if you can. What we see is a is equal to 1. a is the coefficient in front of the squared term. Here, our squared term, it appears like there is no squared term that is a binomial. k appears as 4. So far, so good. Now, what is h? h is going to be 0. So I get my vertex to be 0, 4. A is 1. It's upward opening. If you don't believe me that H is equal to 0, let's consider, let's just plug this in. If I have a factor that is x minus 0 squared, x minus 0 is just x. And if I square that term, x squared is x squared. You may want to make note of this so you don't make this mistake. Or commit this oversight, really. So right now, I know that my vertex is 0, 4. I'm going to put a point at 0, 4. My parabola opens upwards, so there's a sketch. Can I ask you a question? How many x-intercepts does this parabola have? The answer would be 0. That's an interesting notion. Now, we've seen stuff with two x-intercepts, no x-intercepts. I wonder how many x-intercepts we're going to have for our next example. So our next example, pick out the values of a, h, and k. So a is the coefficient in front of the squared term, 1. h appears inside the squared term, h is going to be equal to negative 4. k is equal to 0. Why is that? You may be saying to yourself, there is no constant term. But in fact, if I put plus 0, now the constant term is 0, but that would be the same thing. So I'm able to see that my vertex is going to be negative 4 comma 0, and from this, I get a is equal to 1. Since a is positive, my parabola opens upwards. I'm going to make a quick sketch. Call y or x, y. Negative 4, 0. Well, negative 4 is over here. Negative 4, 0 is right here. Pardon me. And my parabola opens upwards. Now here is an example of a parabola that has exactly one zero.